Good morning, welcome to a frosty cold March 29th. Man, it's cold this morning. I think it's like 32 degrees. And uh, that's not what I was looking forward to this morning. But I am looking forward to building the road today. I got the Cat D5 loaded up. Got anchor uh, pulling it. We're gonna go over to a place and uh, build us a road kind of like through the mountains. Let's go. We're in good shape. Uh, I know the guy that owns this property to the left and that little driveway that shoots up through there, he gave me permission to park there for today. So that is good to go. We're gonna back the dozer off, back right down the side of this road. There's a little pull in, I can pull it back into there and shoot right across the road. We got that dozer across the road now and let's take a look at what we're going what we're doing here This is an old road used to go to an old grist mill back here years and years ago Pretty neat little place, but up on top I think it's 33 acres up on top. It's absolutely beautiful. We'll be up there in a little while I'll show you that but it appears We've got red flags showing us the uh, route we're going to take And so there's one there's one there's one and uh looks like we're going to be actually we're going up the hill here i thought we were going that way so we're going to cut and go up the hill right here guess i need to walk that out that's different than what i thought let's head up through here oh wow got a widow maker up there i don't like the looks of that thing Look at that. The top broke out of that tree right there. And that thing's laying across over here into another tree. I don't like that. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Well, when you're in doubt, you thought you had something figured out. Uh, guess I need to call the owner. <laughs> I'm a little confused. Hey, I'll be back in a minute and tell you what happened. Okay, we are going to uh, forget about those red flags. I don't know what those mean. She did send me a, uh, a map now. So from where the dozer's sitting, there's an old road bed, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. It goes back here to an old uh, grist mill, I believe it was. And uh, we're gonna follow this existing old road out here to the end. And then there's a uh, 50 foot lane that goes up the side of the hill up to the house site. So let's walk out this old road bed and uh, check it out this is a good start right here this makes it uh, a little simpler the plan is here to uh, build a road with two days work as much as i can that's kind of the budget for this road and so far it's not that big a deal it's really just pushing off this small underbrush and privet and these little small trees not too big a deal now i don't know what it looks like when we're going to turn up the hill here there's a couple big trees I'll have to come out. Well, looky there. There's an old sewing machine. Interesting. We'll set that off the side of the road. That might be a 
Something somebody won't keep. I think the best way to make our curve is to go right up through here. That's the least amount of big trees in the way. Uh, they're really just one. So I'm gonna kind of get my way cleared up through there. And I'm gonna turn around, start roughing in this curve, uh, and then we'll go on up to the top. line in there. I'm trying to get out of the way before I get it wrapped around my frocket. That ought to be good. See if we can get this contrary vine out of the way. That's one thing I despise about these woods. And I guess it's just part of it. But these vines are aggravating. Wow. Got that now the way. Woo. 
So in an earlier video, I, was, I asked a question to the regular viewers if they remember where I left my tripod. And a couple of you, two or three of you responded, said, yeah, it was at that, uh, probably at that clearing job you did. Well, you were right, it was there. The owner found it and it was mangled. <laughs> Legs was broke, braces were broke. So he chunked that thing in the trash. So now then, look at here what we've got, a brand spanking new one. This thing cranks up to 72 inches, and the most important thing is orange. I won't be able to lose it, maybe. I'll be able to see that thing, but we got a good one now. Let's push this dirt off in here and build this curve. <laughs> Okay, making some good progress on the road now. We'll take a look here at the curve and how I've got that building up now over here on this left side. And I had to take a place, I'll look at this right here right quick. There's a embankment here. I had to take out a few trees right there and had to find a place to get some clay. So I gouged some clay out of that area there. That was the closest place and the most uh, reasonable place to get that dirt without having to spend a lot of money to get it from somewhere else on the property. But it's looking pretty good now. And we'll walk down here to the bottom. I've got it now transitioned back into the main part of the road. And this is the view from the bottom side. So I still got a little bit of work to get that build out. I want to widen it so they can pull trailers through there. That's coming along fine and dandy. Everything was going just fine until I started looking for the tripod. And spent the last 10 minutes looking for it. And uh, well, I guess you could see uh, missing a leg. I had it over there, I thought, out of the way, and I pushed a tree over into it, knocked it on the ground. I think I can fix that leg, get it back up in there. GoPro took a spill, broke part of it off. This is the receiver for the DJI mic that I'm using now, and it knocked it off. I found it about 20 feet, luckily, found it about 20 feet away from the GoPro and the tripod was knocked on the ground <laughs> so uh i'm just not having good luck with these tripods i i was certain i had that camera and tripod out of the way but i didn't let's see if we can get this dji mic put back together and get this tripod put back together and we'll get back to work this curve now and uh that's all i'm gonna do to it for now time wise i've got it in pretty good shape tracked it back and forth and got it packed in got a good slope on it inward slope towards the uh, ditch over there and that's my gouge area that i had to use for the for the uh, field dirt that actually turned out looking better than i thought it was going to i thought it was just going to be a big old hole side of the bank but it turned out looking all right i'm happy with that and now I've got it down to about right in there. And then I can start transitioning back towards the county road. We'll turn around and take a look now then from the uh, lower side. So that ought to hold up anything they want to bring up through here. I'm not saying it's going to hold up a transfer truck, but I don't see a big rig coming through here. But it'll hold a concrete truck or anything else. Trailer uh, coming up through this driveway now. But that is looking pretty good. Spend a little bit of time building this curve, but that was gonna take the most time of the whole road is getting this built. And I'd say probably uh, from the high point here down, probably six feet of fill in this part of the curve right here. But I'm gonna have some lunch and then we're gonna to head to the top of the hill. Making some good progress now down there, just around those trees at the bottom there is where the, I built the curve and road. Now I've got a path cleared all the way up to here. And here I am at some big trees. When I was talking to them this morning, back up here, they wanted to go through these trees 
said there was a group of trees up here and they wanted to go between the left one and the ones in the middle, but there's no way to get through here without taking some trees out. So I'm gonna stop right here for now as far as going through there, just so I can get some clarification on how they wanna go through this group of trees. But I've got plenty of work to do from here back down the curve, from the curve back down the road. But the problem we've got right now, show you how you can tear up a whole lot of dollars worth of equipment in just a very short time. You see this stick? As I was backing up, that cut off tree come up through here, up through there, and it's wrapped around these, these uh, cords right here. And what this is, these two are hydraulic lines, this one and this one's a hydraulic line, but this is a wire going to my sensor that runs the grade control. And I'm telling you right now, that thing is in a bind. I'm sure hoping I didn't rip or wire. Oh man, that's a mess right there. And my saw, matter of fact, I don't even have a saw because I'm in the dump truck. I don't have anything in the dump truck that can cut this loose. So what I'm gonna have to do is get my knife out, cut through that a little at a time to get that wire loose. I tried going forwards or going backwards and all it was doing was just ripping this wire out even more. So I stopped exactly where I am right now so I can get this cut out. I think we got lucky. There was a whole lot of slack right there. And basically what it did is pull that slack out and kept it from ripping it out. Now then, this hydraulic line, I think what I can do is maybe tilt the blade up and get free from that one. And Diesel ain't helping a bit. He's decided to go to sleep. I knew I shouldn't have been playing with my knife. I'm back in the dozer now. What I want to see if my sensor's still working. So this side slope right here, if it just moves when I start moving the stick, we'll be good to go. We are in good shape. That still works. Good deal. Let's get to work. Diesel here. and push through there in a little gap because they said somewhere up here they've got some markings of where they want to put the uh, little house so let's walk up here and see what we can find also I want to show you this show this beautiful place up here okay I'm up here uh, to open this field and now I see there are markings for their the little house there's a pink flag right here one right over there there and there they're gonna set it right here absolutely gorgeous I'll get the drone out here a little later and fly this area up to the top of this field here and then back down that way the view is just amazing up here
right, we are ready for day two. I'm gonna get this uh, dozer warmed up, get the air filter blowed out. Kind of survey what needs to be done this morning and uh, we're gonna get started. Figured that happened. Cold engine. <laughs> All right. That's how the day's gonna start right there. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Let's keep going. No way to blow that out now. We'll put her back in there. Yesterday evening, uh, I think this is the last thing I videoed really. The county road is right down there. So I've got most of that done to the top of that hill. And uh, that's tied in now with the uh, curve that I built yesterday. Kind of the first thing really is what I built. Let's take a look at the curve and the progress I've got up the hill so far. All right, this is the curve and it is looking good. Satisfied with it. I think it looks pretty good. It's Hold up well, that's the most important thing. And then I've got a good start going up the hill, probably a quarter of the way to about right in there. So we'll get up to those pine trees. That'll be the second thing I wanna do. And then once I get those pine trees, we'll go from those pine trees to those big oaks. And I'll stop at those big oaks. That's where the septic tank inspector suggested to stop for now until they uh, figure out exactly where the septic tank goes in and the installer looks at everything and kind of decides where that needs to go before we cut in a driveway in a parking area. After the dozer warms up, the plan is to go down to the county road there and start on that and work my way back to here. So we'll get that started in just a little bit.
I spent about an hour on this uh, entrance now, and it's uh, pretty good shape. If I have any time left at the end of the day, uh, this is a two-day project. If I have any time left, I'll come back and we'll do a little bit more of this. But for now, uh, considering uh, we only got two days to build this road, that's going to be good enough. And uh, so it, now then it transitions back into where I was at this morning. The dozer was parked right in there. So that's transition now in nice. Uh, and I got the water coming down into here and the water's gonna spill off right there. So that's looking pretty good for now. Let's go up to the top and um, we'll start building up through there, heading up toward those trees. Topsoil's deep. Good night. I'm well over a foot in that cut right there, and I still don't see any clay. Topsoil pretty well cut off now, and uh, now what I'm trying to do is push this clay uphill, which is not fun. <laughs> it's sticky, it's wet, it's hard to cut, but that's the only place I've got to get this dirt from is this little hump right here, and I'm carrying it up there and putting it in that hole, to build that up, and then I'll be able to shape the road once I get enough clay in the right spots. That topsoil is about two feet thick in a lot of places. Just not efficient carrying the clay back and forth on your blade. The stuff needs to come off. We'll keep working on this and uh, we'll come back in a little bit, show you some progress.
making some good progress. I've got the road pretty much how I want it, uh, except for I'm trying to scratch up a little bit more clay to build up that left side. If you're looking up the road, I want the road to slant to the right side. Um, from about 80 feet in front of me, I want it to slant over to the right side. So I'm trying to scratch up some clay out of this ditch over here. A little bit of an update where we are. You saw that I was just finishing up uh, the grade on this side here, up that slope to the inside. And uh, I took a few minutes there and dressed up this shoulder here on this side of the road. I wish it was in the budget where I had uh, time to dress up all of the shoulders as rough as they look. But this is what it would look like if I had the time to do that. It would look real nice. Not in the budget for now, but uh, the road is done up to this point right here unless i have some more time i can go back down and work on that entrance now then we're starting in uh open territory here this is a grass hay field and i'm simply going to cut right up through there right between those two trees and the uh i think i mentioned earlier the septic tank inspector for the state uh thought i might stop at those trees right there just simply until they uh septic tank installer comes out and decides really where between them and the state where the septic tank needs to go. Anyway, we'll cut a road up through this grass and stop at those two trees for now. And that's definitely going to be a, a usable road for them to get started building the house. Well, we are ready to go roll back some of this green grass. Hopefully the topsoil's not that deep, but I'm betting you it is. I think I'm going to go up this way. Stay on top of this hill. Right around this tree. Right through those two trees. Guess what we'll do. Okay, got a little progress report. Uh, got the road cut in now from those two trees there all the way down to here and tied back in to where I come up the hill. Everything's looking good and I'm done except for the fact that I realized A little bit of update now on my 
mess I made by cutting that road on the wrong property. Now I have topsoil all the way up to that first cut right there when I was going that way. I got a little bit more down there to push up here and then I'm gonna dress it up and uh, make it look real nice for him. You know what that guy had the nerve to say whenever we talked about cutting this road on the wrong property? I apologize for doing it. And uh, you know what he said? It happens. <laughs> That's all he said, it happens. So uh, I told him I'd get it dressed up and all that dirt put back in there. I guess I was expecting a cussing, uh, but that's a lesson to me on how to handle things. So I appreciate him saying that that way. Let's take a look around now. I've got that field back in and it's looking good. Got it back dragged and uh, tracked it in. When I come back in a day or two to build the road where it's supposed to go over there, I will uh, drag this again. It'll be dried out. It'll look a little bit better. Well, that was uh, about an hour and 15 minutes to uh, fill that back in and smooth it up. So I figure that cost me about four and a half hours total by the time I uh, dug it out and uh, got it on grade where I wanted it. And then to fill it back in. Lesson learned. You know, and I'm almost glad that happened uh, to meet a fellow like that, that it kind of restores my confidence that people have some sense. <laughs> I mean, he could have been mad and irate and cussed me out and raised all kinds of cane, but to simply say it happens, that gives me some confidence that, that there's people that still in this world that's got a little bit of sense. And after a day like today, I need a Dr. Pepper. Uh, that makes it all better. Good morning. I am back to finish this road today. Hopefully, uh, they're calling for rain this morning and uh, this through the day. Just showers. Hopefully, it'll miss this area. So we're gonna get this thing knocked out. All right, right here's where the mistake happened yesterday. Instead of going out that way, I went that way. We're gonna go ahead and track out through here and uh, just go ahead and, and look at this route and see what the best way is to get through here. There's a green tee post right there, which is the corner of the property. Their property opens up into there, and that's as far as they want to go, is right here at the corner. All right, there's that uh, post right there. Let's get started uh, making this a road down through there. update down that up there is where I stopped the road the house side it's just up there on the crest of that hill but I got this in now and this stuff is wet and slick rained a little bit here and there but it's done got the road canal connected to the main road up to the point where where I'd stopped and uh, here's another look at the neighbor's property that I, I built them a road but they didn't want it <laughs> so uh, I got that filled back in and dressed up and just back dragged that again after it dried overnight. That is looking good. Grass will grow on that and uh, maybe you'll never know I was on that. But this job now is uh, in the books. I've got this road built and uh, I'll end this video with the drone flight all the way up the road, hopefully. If I don't lose signal and I don't crash a drone. So stick around for the message if you will after the drone flight and God bless you and thanks for watching.
Well, I appreciate you sticking around for the message, and uh, the message I want to talk about today deals with, uh, you know, the events that took place in this video <laughs> when I was on the wrong property building that road, and uh, boy, when I figured that out, boy, I was sick at my stomach. And, uh, you know, I guess the clue was earlier in the day, uh, this man's son was up riding a four-wheeler up through there and, and taking pictures, and I, that should have been a clue to say, hey, something's not right here. Uh, but I kept working thinking fully that I was on the property of the people that I was working for and and it wasn't until later I started noticing those metal fence posts and and some flags and I got to thinking man That's not what I thought it was. That's probably a property line and then I looked it up on the GIS mapping system and uh, Sure enough, I was sitting on his property and about that time <laughs> that I figured that out uh, here come two four-wheelers up the hill <clears throat> and uh, I thought, boy, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but I, I knew that I was in the wrong and that uh, certainly an apology was in, in, a, in order, and I was definitely going to fix the property no matter what it took or how long it took me to do it. It was going to be fixed um, just as good as it was when I started. So I, I had a remedy already in my mind. I was determined and settled what I was going to do before uh, the conversation ever took place. And when he come up there on the hill and uh, we began to talk, um, he wasn't, I could tell right away, he wasn't mad, he wasn't aggravated, and uh, <laughs> I said, uh, looks like I've built a road on your property. He said, yeah. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I said, I'm going to fix it. I'll put all the thing back and, and uh, take care of it and fix it like it should be. And he said, he, said, he just simply said, well, it happens. He said, he said, I know you'll fix it. He said, I'm not worried about it. And uh, even just a few minutes later, I asked him uh, what kind of seed he wanted to put back on it. Fescue, I was going to buy uh, a bag of seed and sow it down with seed as well. And, and uh, he said, you know, he said, don't worry about it. He said, it's going to grow back. And his attitude just really kind of set me back because <laughs> I was fully expecting a cousin. Uh, I was fully expecting this man to be mad and frustrated and aggravated at me. And, and uh, you know, it's hard for a man to take a cousin, but I was preparing myself as best I could for it. And, uh, but it just floored me, uh, his attitude towards that and uh, how understanding he was that, that things like that happen. And they do, I, I didn't have intentions of doing that. There was no intentions in my mind of crossing over onto his property uh, purposely. And, and, uh, and I think he knew that right off the bat. And you know, some folks might say, there's no way I would put that on video, cutting a road on somebody else's property, but this is real life. This is what happens. And uh, I make mistakes just like we all make mistakes. And that's certainly what that was. I'm not gonna hide it or sugarcoat it. I blatantly made a mistake and, and I should have done a little bit more research and used GIS mapping to find out where I was. So it's, it's not uh, genuine to you if I'm hiding things like that from you on these videos. So it's good that you see this and, and realize that, that there are mistakes made in the world and, and see really how they can be handled. Cause this man handled it very well. Um, and, and I'm really surprised and, and taken back by how well he handled it. And, and in fact, it restores my confidence that, that there are some people in the world that, that can see a mistake as what it is and uh, come up with a remedy without being so angry or frustrated. A little long-winded there, but I wanted to get that out and wanted to share that message of that. But what I want to talk about in the messages is uh, two scriptures in Proverbs and one in Romans. So we will look first in Proverbs chapter 19, uh, looking at verse 11, and it says, The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger, and his glory is to overlook a transgression. And that is uh, words of wisdom to give us an understanding from uh, Solomon, who wrote the uh, Proverbs, that it's discretion to overlook a transgression, that it's considered uh, uh, honorable to do that. And rather than to be irate and frustrated and mad and aggravated, um, see the mistake for what it is and, and get it handled without all of the aggravation and frustration that goes along with it in some of the world today. So the next passage of scripture we will look at is in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 17, and it says, A quick-tempered man acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. Meaning that if we are quick-tempered and, and easily made mad and easily frustrated, that that is considered as foolishness to act that way. And it, and it truly is because, you know, in, in a lot of times, I've, I've certainly done this in my life, and, and I know all of us have. We've acted fool we've gotten so mad and, and hastily said things and, and uh, did things that weren't right. And 
So when we look back on those, especially as a Christian, we look back on those after the Holy Spirit uh, <laughs> takes us to the woodshed for a little discipline, that we realize how bad a mistake that was to act so foolishly and, and how it really uh, doesn't accomplish anything. So that's what that scripture is talking about there, that a quick-tempered man acts foolishly and a man of wicked intention is hated. You know, hate's a strong word, and I try not to use that word a lot in my life and, and trying to do better because hate is such a strong word. But when you think about people in your life that are so contrary and so aggravating and so frustrating that they're so angry all the time that you, I'm not going to use the word hate, but you dislike that person to the extent that you don't want to be around them because of all the, the bitterness and hatred that they just spew out. So the Bible is right in that. That, that, that they are, uh, that, that, uh, that a person like that is, is disliked to the point that, that it's hard for people to be around them. So in the last passage of scripture we want to look at is in Romans chapter 12, verse 18. And it says this, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. I want to read that again. It says, If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Listen, it depends on me how I react. It depends on me how I react to situations. If I react badly or if I have a quick temper, it's going to turn bad real quick. And that's why I said a minute ago, I was preparing myself as best I could for the cussing that I thought was coming. So it would be very hard for me to take that. But I was in the wrong. That doesn't mean necessarily that I deserved a good cussing. But listen, I need to prepare myself for that, and I needed to, I needed to as best I could to live at peace with even this man or anybody else that I come in contact with in my life. So that's the scripture that I want to leave you with today. If as much as possible, live peaceably with all men. So I hope that uh, this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that my mistake has um, helped you in some sense restore some confidence in, in folks as well, the way he handled that. I hope that you're a Christian. I hope that you're a believer in Jesus Christ because that makes us a little bit more tolerant to things in life and because we know that we are representatives of Christ. The, Bi the Bible would say that we are ambassadors of Christ. We are representatives of Christ is what that means. So the world should see a difference in us as Christians. If you're not a believer, if you're not trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I hope that you come to a point where you can do that, that you can fully trust in Him for the forgiveness of your sins and have a home, as the Word would say, eternal in the heavens. So God bless you and I appreciate you watching.